My name is Sophia and I'm addicted to makeup brushes. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I'm very excited for today's video. I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time now. This video is going to be focused on all of my favorite brushes. That's right. I had to choose between my children and put all of my brushes out on my vanity and choose the ones that are my absolute favorite that I recommend for you all. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be sitting here in front of you doing my makeup, showing you how I use all of my favorite brushes. So if you guys are interested in some fantastic brush recommendations and just some tips on how you can use them, then keep watching. And if this is your first time here, then welcome, welcome. My name is Sophia and this is my channel that is focused on luxury beauty. Every single week I upload new content on new beauty releases, favorites videos like these. I do will I buy it style of videos. So if that sounds of interest to you, then you're in the right place, my friend. Hit that subscribe button to join our fam because we have so, so much fun on this channel. And you can also hit that notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video. If you like this video, if you want to see more brush content videos, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And don't worry, I know we're going to be talking about a lot of products in this video. I'm going to link everything in that description box down below. I'm gonna have it organized so that you guys can go back after watching this video and find the brushes that you were interested in. And just so you know, most of my links are affiliate links. So if you wanna support my channel this holiday season, shopping through my links is a really great way to do so at no additional cost to you. All right, party people, let's get into it. I'm gonna be doing my makeup with you guys while I use my favorite brushes. I do have a couple of favorite brushes in every category. I'm trying to give you guys some options in case you're looking for a more affordable brush, maybe a brush that has some synthetic hair versus natural hair. Maybe you have smaller eyes, maybe you have a smaller face or bigger eyes or bigger face. So I will give you guys some alternatives in every single category, but we'll kind of go through. This will basically be like me talking to you. If you were to come over to my house and we'd be doing our makeup together and I'd be showing you, here's how you do your makeup, demonstrating how I use the brushes. So hopefully this will be helpful. You guys will notice I do have a couple of brands that I purchase most of my brushes from. So that will become very apparent. There's tons of really good brush brands out there, but my favorites tend to be BK Beauty, Refer, you know, Sonia G, Wayne Goss, Coyuto, Chikahoto. So a lot of my recommendations are going to be from those brands. So just kind of keep that in mind. Also, before we get started, I want to let you guys know a lot of these brands are doing Black Friday deals at the time of me filming this video. It's right before Black Friday. And so today that this video is going live, Refer is doing a 50% off sale. So I will link to that down below. I also have a collection specifically of all of my refer favorites that I recommend for that sale. And then in addition to that, BK Beauty today just launched their sale. So they're going to be doing 20% off all of their brushes. And then you can save even more if you buy part of the set because you already get a discount with the sets. And then you get an extra 20% off of that. So I will link that all down below. I'm also going to link a collection with all of my BK Beauty favorites down below where I kind of talk you through. Maybe not all of them make it into this video. But that way, in case you guys want to shop those sales, you guys have those references anytime they have deals on those site and any other deals, any other Black Friday deals, you name it, I can find on these brushes. I will be posting those to my Instagram and to the community board here on YouTube. So definitely subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram. You can find my handle in that description box down below. All right, let's do our makeup. I'm just clipping my hair back here so I don't get it messed up. So the first brush category that we're going to be talking about today are foundation brushes and there can only be one brand in my mind and that is it cosmetics i love their foundation brushes whenever people ask me what's a good recommendation for a good foundation brush whether it's my mom a family member a best friend anybody i always point them towards this brand because foundation brushes just get so dirty so i like something that is going to be a real workhorse brush and that's also going to be something that's just easy to clean quite frankly and so i want to show you guys some of my favorite ones from it cosmetics and they're all more or less the same my favorite ones that they launch are these these are the love is the foundation brush and they come out with a new style every single year you can see sometimes it's a flat top brush sometimes it's a little bit of a rounded brush but they're all good don't worry if you don't have the one from past years they have a new one for this year that I will link down below. If for some reason that sells out because it's limited edition, they also have this brush. This is one of their complexion brushes and it has a flat top. And what I like about these brushes is just the fact that they are so dense. The foundation doesn't get all gunked up inside. So let me show you how I do my foundation with these brushes. So for this demonstration, I'm going in with a particularly runny foundation because I feel like this is where people have trouble. They often get streaks. 
This is the Pat McGrath Foundation, by the way. I'm gonna go in with the one from the permanent line just because I know you guys will be able to get something like this. And what's great about this is that you basically can just stamp it on like that because it covers a wide surface. It's not gonna give you any streaks. And like I said, it's not getting down there too deep and it's great especially this one because it has this little triangular shape so you can kind of get into all of the nooks and crannies one of you guys messaged me on instagram and you were saying what's that foundation brush that you are always using and i was like girl it's the it cosmetics and i sent you the link and then you came back a week later and you were like yo it's a really good brush <laughs> Everybody likes these brushes. I know that these aren't the bougiest of brushes, but they are great workhorse brushes. And for me, these are the ones that I recommend the most. These are the ones that I use the most in my collection. Foundation is on, and now we're gonna do under eye concealer. And I like a very specific shape that fits snugly under the eye and isn't too small, something that's quick. Because a lot of times I don't have a lot of time before I'm filming in the morning. And the one that I've told you guys about before that I absolutely love is this one from the Sephora Pro line. Very affordable, you can get these 30% off in those Sephora sales that they have. This is the Sephora Pro number 47 brush. I'll just kind of show you. It's like a little, almost like a little Thumb print, a little paw print. It fits very snugly under the eye. These are great. You can wash them over and over and over again. They will hold up. Like I said, I have three, not because they fall apart, more so because I just get them dirty so quickly. And then the other one that I've been loving, which has kind of dethroned this one, I'm not gonna lie, but you can only get this in a set at the time of me filming this video. It's this new one from that BK Beauty extension line. This is the BK Beauty 109. And I'm gonna show you guys here these are very, very similar brushes. They're very similar. The BK Beauty, it's a little bit more luxurious and it's a lot softer. So let me show you how to use this brush. So I've got my Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer on. Yes, I know, I put a lot of concealer on. I have a lot of under eye circles and I also have rosacea at the top here. So I like something that I can really fit under the eye and this feels like teddy bear hair. The BK Beauty brushes, I've told you guys, I think I put, I put this line in my best top five holiday releases of the year so far. I really like the full set. Unfortunately, this only comes in the set, but they are gonna be selling these brushes separately after the holidays, so kind of keep that in mind. I do think that the set is worth it. A lot of times you guys ask me about the BK Beauty sets or the Rever sets. They're all really good. It just depends on the shapes that you want. In this video, I'm focusing on single brushes, especially if you're somebody where you already have a lot of standard brushes. You don't need to keep buying tons of sets. Sometimes it's nice to just pick up that one perfect brush that does exactly what you need, you know, kind of filling in the gaps in your collection. But yeah, man, this concealer brush, it's so, so good. <laughs> it's so good. I'm actually gonna get one of these for my mom as soon as I have the opportunity. But if you want something more affordable or you can't wait until these are sold separately, the one from Sephora, it's just as good. It's just not as soft. So this one definitely has dethroned. Absolutely love this. Once again, the BK Beauty 109. We're not done with concealer brushes because there are many types of concealer brushes, okay? Trust me, there are. And this next category is going to be detail concealer brushes. So I have a couple different ones here for different purposes. The next one is also from BK Beauty. If you like more of a smaller concealer brush, this is gonna be great. I've heard so many great things from all of you about this. This is the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy collection. It's the A506 and it has a very similar kind of paw print shape. I actually like to use this a lot for eyeshadow primer. I'll just kind of go in here, smooth out the creases, go in with a little bit of primer. It's really great for that. I know that it might be big for some people's eyelids, but my I have a lot of um, lid space on my eyes, so I like to just kind of smooth everything out. But this is also good if, unlike me, you're not putting on a ton of concealer and you just wanna go in the spots where it makes sense, because especially I think if you have mature skin, a lot of my family members, they say, what can I do? I, I don't wanna wear concealer because I feel like I put on concealer and it just ends up looking worse because it goes into my fine lines. And I think the best way to go about it is just putting it where you need it. So especially here in the tear duct region, especially right here, you kind of get, at least for me, I kind of get the darkest area of my dark circles right there. I would say use a smaller brush and stay away from the wrinkles that you get right here. Focus more on the darker areas 
just where you need it. So that's what I really like this brush for. The other brushes that I really like for concealer are from the Sonia G Fusion line. So this line is really good for both powder, but also mostly primarily cream products. And I like to use these for all kinds of things, but concealer and correcting and touch-ups are really where these shine. So I'm gonna show you guys here, just kind of in descending size, depending on what you wanna use them for. First up right here, we have the soft concealer, then we have the blender, then we have the detail. So for the soft concealer, this once again, it's really good for kind of just going into those places where you need it. Or maybe you just want to go like around the nose. Maybe you want to go around the brow, maybe along your chin. This is really good for smoothing out any like creasing that you get throughout the day. And then with the blender, I think that this is just as good, but it's even smaller. Once again, we're all different. We have different size faces. And so I think that this as well is really good if you want just a little bit more detail. And then we have the smallest one, which is the detail brush. And I'm gonna show you guys, you can notice I have a little friend right there. I'm gonna go in with my Uma Beauty concealer and I'm just gonna like dot that in just where I need it. And I have a little one right there too. So this is really, really good for those little spots. It's good for kind of blending along the lash line right there. You can also use this for disguising the little like mala bags right around here. And I have like a broken blood vessel right here as well. I know it's mostly covered up from all the concealer I put on there, but sometimes if I'm going lighter, I'll just kind of go in with this just where I need it. So those are my recommendations for concealer brushes. Next we have powder brushes. So basically for setting powder, finishing powder, and I have a couple here for different purposes and different uses, of course. So the first one is gonna be more so for like all over powder. And this is from BK Beauty. This is the BK Beauty 102. This is like the perfect, big, soft, fluffy powder brush. And I don't use powder all that much, but when I do, I like something big, fluffy, and domed like this. If I'm just going to go all over, maybe it's like a particularly dewy foundation and I just need a little bit of something to kind of lock and load it. I think that this is really good. You'll see right here, it's very soft, wispy and kind of like floppy. So when you see when I put it on my cheek, how it kind of just curves around my face. I think that's really good when you're doing powder and you just want it to look very airbrushed and seamless. One of my favorite brushes of all time that is good for a lot of things, but specifically good for finishing powders is this one from Sonia G. This is the Sonia G Smooth Buffer. Those of you who follow me are probably tired of me saying this, but this is that brush that you didn't know you need. It's so luxurious. I'm gonna demonstrate it right now with my Hourglass powder. This is the Hourglass Elephant Palette. And I'm just dipping into one of the setting powders here and you guys will see or I should say finishing powder rather you just buff this buff this into the skin if you have more of a blemish you can kind of stamp it on so that you don't mess up the concealer that you just did. This really is the best brush for all of these finishing powders. Or if you have the Guerlain Meteorites, this is your brush. This is gonna be the best brush for that because not only does it fit perfectly in so you can swirl it around and get all of the powder on, but it just does the best job of really buffing it into the skin so you don't get any weird, you know, shiny patches or anything like that. So yeah, the Sonia G Smooth Buffer, to me, this is kind of a must have. Whether you have a lot of brushes or not, this is a great one that I recommend to so many people because it's so multi-purpose. Not only can you use it like I just did to do a little bit of a finishing powder all over the face, but it's small enough as well that you can do it just where you need it. I also really like to use this for super pigmented blushes that really need to be buffed into the skin. I'm very pale and so I want it to look natural enough and that's what this is good for. I also like to use this for highlighters or maybe glowy blushes where once again I want them buffed into the skin. I showed you guys how I used this with the new Chanel Illuminating Powder that came in the holiday collection. Those were a little bit, you could argue, dark for me, but when I buff them in with this, oh my god, they just look so good. This is definitely one of my top recommendations. Now, if we're talking powder brushes for detail powdering, I really like this one from Sonia G. Once again, from Sonia G. You guys always have a lot of Sonia G in this video. This is called the Detail Pro, and this could be used as a very, very large crease brush, but I think for a lot of people, this is gonna be too big. I like to use this for just powdering where I need it. And most of the time, if I'm not using the hourglass powders, I'm really just powdering in a couple of different places. So I'll show you guys, I've got my Charlotte Tilbury finishing powder right here. And most of the time it's like just right around here in those areas where it might get just a little bit too shiny. I know a lot of you guys like to powder under your eyes as well. So I'll just kind of show you 
how you can do that. You can go across the lid. It really is the perfect size for any face, for any kind of detail powder work. The next category was probably the hardest one to choose and it's bronzer brushes. I have a lot <laughs> have a lot of bronzer brushes, a lot of them. Also blush brushes, we will get to that in a second, but this was the hardest one to choose from. I picked a couple, okay? So I picked a couple for powder and then I also have for cream as well. The first one I'm gonna show you was kind of an unexpected favorite and it's this one from BK Beauty. This is the BK Beauty 105. I wanna say this one is called like the all over powder or the, the buffing brush, I don't know. I never really go by whatever the brands tell me there for. I just look at it and I decide what I'm gonna use it for. And like I said, I don't do a lot of all over powder you can definitely use this for buffing 100% but I like to use this for super quick and lazy bronzer application let me show you so I've got my little Wayne Goss bronzer and contour duo here and I just dip into this and look how quick this is because it's so big and it's so soft I'm gonna be done in like two seconds right this is like five minute phase you got two seconds we're done look bronzers on my face see how seamless it looks See how seamless it looks? I don't, I'm doing more, but I don't really need it. You can also build it up. It is so, so fast, especially if you have more of a natural bronzer like this. This does a really, really good job picking up the formula. If you have baked formulas, anything that you're like, oh, my brush is just not grabbing it. Because this is so dense, it does a great job of picking up those types of formulas. So wanted to put this on your radar. I think I've talked about it once or twice, but I don't know, at some point this summer, I just got into using this for that purpose. I really like this for bronzer. I also have some more traditional shapes that I wanna show you guys here as well. The first one, this might be one of my favorite brushes in my collection because it is so stinking beautiful. Oh my gosh, if you love food aid, if you love artisan crafted, handmade brushes. Can I introduce you to the Koyudo Kakishi Bozome line? This is the 02 powder brush. They have two. I think it's the 01 and the 02. The 01 has more of a round shape and this one has more of a flat shape. You don't need both. You definitely don't need both, but I really like the flatter one because I feel like you get a little more control kind of swiping it across the face like this. This is definitely a little bit of a splurge. These are expensive brushes, especially the larger brushes that are in the line. I have a couple from the line. I think I've almost collected all of them at this point. Absolutely stunning. You have these gorgeous persimmon dyed bristles. You have this really beautiful cherry blossom wood handle. This is, it's like a collector's item that you're going to want to use every single day. You're going to wake up and do your makeup and feel like a celebrity. You're going to feel like royalty using this. So I know that this one is a little bit of a splurge, but I have to talk about it. This line, oh God, it just gives me so much happiness and joy when I use any of the brushes from this line. Another one of my favorites, which also is pretty pricey, is this one from the Chico Hodo Z series. I want to say this is the Z9. I'll put it down below. I always forget and then you guys correct me. This is made of squirrel hair. These are super duper soft. If you're going to buy anything from Chikohoto, I highly recommend just save up and get something from the Z series because I've tried a couple of their lines and once you buy something from the Z series, you literally can't, you can't try anything else from Chikohoto. Like this is so beautiful. This one obviously is a different shape so you can get a little bit different of an application. It's also softer because it is squirrel hair. So if you have something very finely milled and you want it buffed out to perfection, this is going to be fantastic. I know it's a little bit pricey, but I do have a more affordable option here as well that I think is just a good standard bronzer brush. And once again, it's this one from BK Beauty. I always forget the numbers. This is the BK Beauty 103. And I'll show you here. It's a very similar shape, right, to the one from Koyudo, but this is going to be synthetic fibers. It's going to be more affordable, but this is just a good standard, very soft bronzer brush that I highly recommend. For cream bronzer, there are two that I have been using a lot lately. And the first one is from BK Beauty. This is the BK Beauty 101 brush. And a lot of you, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Sophia, no, that's a foundation brush. That one is for foundation. This is kind of their most popular brush. It always sells out and then it comes back in stock. This is what people call the bunny foot brush. Well, I actually like to use this for cream bronzer because I think that a lot of times with foundation, 
because see how it is a bit wispy the foundation kind of gets gunked up in the brush at least my foundation does i like to use this for cream bronzer because cream bronzer is a little bit thicker it doesn't get stuck in the brush and look it just fits perfectly on your cheek so as you're dabbing that cream bronzer in or maybe you're somebody where you like to put your cream bronzer as more of a bronzer. this is good for that too because you're getting like that angled shape as well i like this for cream bronzer i think it's just the perfect shape it's the perfect like synthetic texture and then the other one that a lot of times you guys ask me what brush is that it's this one from clinique this one is good for cream bronzer and cream blush it's kind of just a good go-to for any liquid or cream products and this one is a very very different shape this one is round and it has these really cool duo fiber bristles you'll see these ones right here are very short and these ones at the top are longer and wispier and this is perfect especially if you have a cream bronzer or cream blush compact where you kind of need to like dig into it you know almost like break the seal to get to the product that's what this is good for because you can like really in there pick it up and then stipple it on and then blend it out hopefully they still have these in stock and i will link them for you guys down below next up we have contour brushes and the first one that i want to show you is from repper this is the repper number 31 and the reason why i like this one specifically for cream contour is it has this really cool hopefully you guys can see this duo fiber bristles so some of the bristles are shorter some of them are longer which gives it a really nice wispy soft texture that is great for blending in a cream contour other than that it's the perfect size for just just hit fitting right here under your cheekbone so you can really chisel things out i've got my tom ford shade and illuminate cream contour here so i am going to just demonstrate for you guys how easy see that slight very natural contour that i'm getting right there you can also do it up here if you want to make your forehead a little bit more narrow you could go in right there as well it's a great workhorse brush as well i've washed this so many times i think that they might have advertised this as a foundation brush you can also use it for that as well i think if you have more of a maybe a thicker foundation or if you have a cream foundation like the one the patrick ta one that comes in a similar compact as this i think this is going to be a really good brush for that the other ones that i want to show you are a little bit of a different shape also for cream contour i like this one from the fusion series this is the jumbo base from sonia g one of the nice things about this as well, in addition to the refer one I just showed you, they're all very multifunctional. So you could use this for cream blush, you could use it for foundation, but I like to use this for cream contour. So just kind of fitting right there underneath the cheek. If this one is a little too expensive for you, Refer does have a similar one. It is the Refer number 24. They're not exact, but the shape is very similar. You'll notice the Refer one, it is a little bit bigger and more wispier than the one from Sonia G. I really do like the one from Sonia G better, but I wanted to show you guys some affordable alternatives. And then for powder contour, I really just use this one from Repper. This is the Repper number four, and this is your perfect little angled brush. I've been using this with that Wayne Goss compact with the kind of grayer contour, and I just lightly brush it underneath the cheekbone just like that but i like something that's a little bit smaller for powder contour because i find that with powder contour as well a lot of times it is pretty cool tone and you want to get it in just the right spot or else you're gonna look like a skeleton <laughs> so in addition to the bronzer brushes choosing ones for blush was also extremely difficult and all of these brands that i've been talking about today they have really nice really good quality blush brushes it just kind of depends on the shape and the size that you want the three that i picked are the three that when I look at them and when I use them, they just bring me so much joy. And the three of these are kind of more bougier brushes. So I'm just kind of calling that out from the start. The first one that I have here is once again <laughs> from the Koyuto Kakishi Buzome line. This is the 03 Cheek Brush. I'm not going to go into the materials and everything because I had already talked about the powder brush and the other section. But man, this is just as good it's so good and this one is even softer and lighter and wispier than the other one i'll show you guys right here basically just the miniature version of the other brush i know that i'm usually here to save you money but i really do love this line and it's such good quality that if you do save up for it ask santa for it maybe you can get it as a gift or something like that you definitely won't regret it similarly i really love the cheek brush from the chica hodo z series this is the z8 and it, it says cheek slash highlight brush so this one is going to be a little bit smaller i'll show you up against the one that i just talked about this is oh my god every little swipe is like a 
kiss from an angel. Oh, it's so, so soft. Oh my goodness. And I'll show you up against the powder brush that I just showed you so you guys can get a little bit of a comparison there. It is smaller. So if you're someone that likes a little bit of like a smaller, more wispier brush, you're using it for more lighter, more natural toned blushes. That's what this is going to be good for. If you're just more petite, have a smaller face, have a smaller cheekbone, this is going to be a great one for you. And then the last blush brush that I want to recommend is from the Chikohoto FO series. This is made of silver fox hair and this is the FO4. There is another blush brush in the line, but this one is unique because hopefully you guys can see that. It's a little bit slanted. And so this is the one that I recommend because you kind of can use it for a couple different things. You could also use it for highlighter. You could also use it for contour, but I like to use it for blush. So I'm just going in with my RMS Maiden's, what is this called? Maiden's blush, Maiden's blush right here. I've been kind of obsessed with this blush lately and wearing it with a lot of my eyeshadow looks because I've been reviewing so many eyeshadow palettes lately. And the nice thing about the Silver Fox hair is that it's just as durable and strong as goat hair, but it's soft like squirrel hair. So this is almost like, this is your super premium brush product. And I highly recommend this line. Like I know that these brushes, some of them are very expensive, but you won't regret it once you get them. They are extremely high quality. And like I said, I know that the three that I'm recommending here are a little bit on the pricey side, but I also really like the Wayne Goss one. I also really like the Rever ones. I love the ones from BK Beauty. There, there's so many good blush brushes out there, but these are the three that just make my heart sing. And real quick, in terms of cream blush, I gotta give it once again to that Clinique one that I showed you guys a second ago for the cream bronzer. This is the one that I use. You guys see me using this all the time. And yeah, so this is gonna be the one that I recommend for cream blush. The next category is gonna be highlighter and I did not hesitate with these selections. The first one is the Wayne Goss Airbrush. This is one of my favorite Wayne Goss brushes. I'm not going to mention too many Wayne Goss brushes in this video, only because a lot of the ones that I have from him are actually limited edition. A lot of them were like his holiday brushes. So I do love Wayne Goss. It's just, I don't want to talk about brushes that you guys can't get. But this one, oh my gosh, this one is a must have. I believe this also is squirrel hair and it's called the airbrush for a reason. Look how wispy and airy and angelic that is. I'm going to be applying my Chanel Holiday Highlighter right here. This is in the shade Or Rose. And one of the nice things about this is because the bristles are black, you can see just how much you are getting on there. And it's just like a whisper, a whisper on your skin. It puts the most natural highlighted effect onto your skin. It's perfect. This is one of Wayne's best brushes. And thankfully, this one seems to stay in stock or at least come back in stock. This must be very popular because a lot of his other brushes I've had trouble getting duplicates of or just singles of in general. So yeah, highly recommend the Wayne Goss Airbrush. The other highlighter brush that I adore is this one from Sonia G. This is the Sonia G Mini Cheek. How cute is this? The mini cheek. It is a mini cheek. And you know who sold this to me? Mel Thompson. I remember her using this and just... Oh my gosh, her artistry. Her artistry was absolutely amazing. I think we can all agree about that. Comment down below if you remember her reviewing this or ever using this. I just remember her using this and just kind of gently, you know, as she did, dusting the highlighter on different parts of her face. And I just thought, wow, that's a really beautiful brush. She could literally sell me anything. And that's what I like to use this for. I like to use it for highlight. You could use it for blush as well, but it is a little bit small. But once again, if you're more fatigued, you have a smaller face then this would be good for that if you're looking for a synthetic option the one that i'm going to recommend is the bk beauty 112 at the time of me filming this video this is one of their newer brushes that came in that core extension line so this will be sold as a single after the holidays and i really like this one when i did my little talking about this line in my top five holiday release favorites video i forgot to tell you about this one i actually had this one in like the wash pile it needed to be washed because I was using it. So I'm talking about it in this video. It's so great. This one is slanted, unlike the other ones, but it's just as wispy as the mini cheek. So it's gonna be really easy to just glide along the cheekbone right there. You could also use this as a powder brush, I guess, but I really like this for highlight. And finally, for cream highlight, I actually like this one from Refer. This is the Refer number 17. And I wanna say that they call this like a foundation brush, but this is so small. 
It's way too small to be a foundation brush, but I found a use for this and it is with cream highlight. And so what I like to do, let's say you're using like the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter wands. I will dot those along the cheekbone and then I take this and because it's flat, you can gently blend it in like that. And if you need to buff it in a little bit more, you can do that as well. Or if you have some of those highlighters, like maybe the Rose Ink highlighter or the Westman Atelier highlighters that come in a compact, but they have kind of a, they're, they're a cream formula you can dip this in and dot that on like this and this is the perfect brush for that are you still with me friends because we have made it through all of the face brushes and now i'm going to be getting into the eye brushes and then i have a couple of like miscellaneous categories at the end that i'm going to talk about and the palette that i'm going to be using to do my makeup today is none other than the mothership five bronze seduction i thought i would pick something that had different finishes that we kind of all know at this point so we can do a beautiful you know, kind of holiday glam look. The first category of eye brushes that I'm gonna talk about are crease brushes, starting off with more larger, fluffier crease brushes. If you're someone like me and you have a lot of space right here, you're probably gonna go for this size of brush. And my favorite one by far is the Wayne Goss number 16. You guys will see, this is very fluffy, very domed. It fits perfectly in the crease of my eye. The only thing that I don't like about this brush is that it's never in stock. I would buy probably two or three more of these if it came back in stock, but unfortunately it's not in stock that often. So I do wanna show you guys two alternatives because these shapes are pretty similar so we have the Wayne Goss one right here and then here from refer we have the refer number 27 so you guys can see they're pretty similar but the the weight the Wayne Goss is better it's a little bit better I just can't explain it it's a little bit fluffier and has more bristles but the refer one is pretty similar and then we also have this one from the angie hot and flashy line from bk beauty this is the a503 and this one this one is actually probably more of like a synthetic dupe for the refer so those are my top picks for a large crease brush so let me demo these for you guys so i'm going to go in with the wane into this medium shade and yeah it just blends it so well. It's just the perfect shape as you can see. Now I have some other options here if you guys have smaller eyes or if you want synthetic fibers. So these are the three that I have prepared right here. The first one is the Sonia G Blender Pro. That is the one that we have right here. Then right here we have the BK Beauty 202 and then we have the Refer number 14. So the BK Beauty and the Sonia G, these are pretty similar. It's just obviously the BK Beauty is synthetic fibers and yeah these are kind of the same as the ones I just showed you they're just a little smaller so especially if you want to get a little bit more in there I'll put a little bit of pigment on here and if we just wanted to deepen that up a bit then this is the perfect crease brush for that I use all of these kind of interchangeably it really just depends on the look I'm going for and it really just depends on which brushes are already dirty and then the refer number 14 I see people using this all the time that have hooded eyes or smaller eyes I always see Morgan Turner using this as her crease brush because she's very small and petite and I just see her like whack on that shadow and I'm always amazed at how well these brushes work for her eyes I actually like to use this one more so for blending because it is a little bit smaller but this would also also be a really good detail brush if you have larger eyes. Next up we have shader brushes. These are going to be the kinds of brushes that are going to pick up those metallic formulas or any kind of formula but usually like the shimmers that you have in your eyeshadow palette and lay it all over the lid. And my favorite one is from Sonia G. This is the Sonia G soft shader. I now have three of these. I had to find the one that was clean for this video. Oh my goodness this is the perfect size at least for my eyes and what I really like about this is that it's kind of the perfect mix between dense enough but also wispy enough. Let me show you guys what I mean. So I'm going to be picking up this shimmer shade from the Pat McGrath palette. So I have it right there. I picked it up super well. When I'm putting these kinds of shadows on my eyes, especially if I'm afraid of fallout, I like something that's just going to move to the shape of my eye and very, very seamlessly like push it onto the lid without tugging too much because we don't want to tug the skin on our eyes. It's flat enough that it lays it down so well. See how it just kind of bends to the shape of my eye? That's why I really like this. And it's just the perfect shape 
to do an all over color, you gotta get this brush. I know, I know I don't tell you you need things, but this is also one of my top picks. This has gotta be in like the top five that I show you guys today. So yeah, that is my favorite all around, just kind of go to basic shader brush. Of course, I have a couple more that I wanna show you though. If you have smaller eyes, I would recommend picking this one up. This is the Sonia G Builder Pro. And you'll see right there, it's just a little bit smaller than the soft shader. It also is a little bit flatter than the soft shader. So you could use this for kind of like the inner part of the eye, more detail work, or if you have smaller eyes, like I said, that's gonna be good. The other one that I really like to really pack on shadow is this one. This is the Builder from Sonia G. And this is great if we just wanna add a little bit more intensity. See that? It just gets the shadow on really, really well. Just packing it on, packing it on. If you want more intensity, this is gonna be really great. This is also just because of the shape, because it's more dense. If you have baked formulas, you know, maybe it's like a Tom Ford wet dry or something like that. This is gonna be really great at picking those up as well. The two synthetic options that I recommend are, of course, from BK Beauty, that is my favorite synthetic brush brand. I have the BK Beauty 203 and the BK Beauty 209. So you'll see right there, the 203 is bigger and the 209 is smaller. 209 is really, really good, especially for more creamy shadows. These are synthetic. So if you have something that's super creamy and you really wanna just like smear it and pack it on the lid, I really like this one for more detail work. But once again, if you have smaller eyes, I think this is also gonna be great as just like your standard shader brush. The last shader brush that I wanna put on your radar is this one from Sonia G. This is the Sonia G Jumbo Blender. And the reason that I wanna show you guys this one is because this one is perfect for my friends out there that love one and done looks. This is your brush because, you know, she's a little chunky girl, okay? It's chunky. It's called the Jumbo Blender. Hopefully you guys can see that, but this is thicker and chunkier. I'll kind of put it up against my eye. See how big it is? But it's great for one and done because you just dip this into any shadow that you have and you just easily buff it and brush it all over the eye. It's super quick, perfect for one and done, especially for brands that have softer formulas like Suku, Dior, Tom Ford Wet Dry, Chanel, those types of formulas. I think that this brush does spectacularly well with those because once again, you don't have as many shades and sometimes you're not going in with a super deep matte, you know, with your crease brush and your detail brushes and all that. Sometimes you're just going into the first shade and you're just getting it all over the lid and then maybe you add one or two shades from there in different places. So yeah, I wanna put this one on your radar. This is the best one for one and done eyeshadow. The next category is one that I am calling soft depth. I know I made that up, but you guys know, like if you've watched any of my tutorials or my demos and my videos in the past, you'll know a lot of times what I like to do before I sort of build up a smoky look, or if I just want a softer look, but I wanna add some depth in the crease, I will go in with a fluffy brush just kind of like in the outer eye to start building up that depth. And the two that I wanna to recommend to you all are from Sephora and BK Beauty. So first off, I have this one for BK Beauty, which is the 206. And then I also have the Sephora Pro number 27 as a little bit more of like an affordable option. This one from Sephora, this is another one where I think I've got like three or four of these because they're just very affordable and they're really good for this purpose. You guys will notice that both of these brushes, they're very fluffy and they're sort of the perfect size to just fit in that outer eye. So let me show you. So I am dipping back into that lighter brown that I used at the beginning of the eye demo. And because this is a smaller brush, it's gonna add a little bit more depth, but it's wispy enough that it's gonna be soft depth. See the difference between those, especially if you're someone where you don't like super crazy looks. These are the kind of brushes that are perfect for blending things out. Or if you have hooded eyes and you just need to kind of blend along the edges, you really want to bring that eye shadow upwards. This is going to be a great brush for that. Now this category is just called depth. <laughs> this is for adding more depth for those smoky looks if you want to build your look up a little bit. And the brush that I recommend for this, I've become a little bit obsessed with this one as of late. This is the Sonia G Crease One. And sorry, mine is, it looks like it's a little bit dirtier. I think it's a little bit stained, so I'm sorry about that. And what's great about this is that it's almost like a pencil. It's almost like a pencil, but wispier so that you can still blend out the shadow. So you can just draw the depth wherever you need it and then blend it out. So let me show you what that looks like. So now I'm dipping into this deeper brown in our Pat McGrath palette and I'm going to just draw it 
See that where I want it because it's pointy. It fits really nicely into the crease and then I'm blending and blending. See the difference there? You get a little bit more depth. And then if you have smaller eyes, I have another slightly smaller alternative. This is from Repper. This is the Repper number 26. So I'll just show you guys right here. The Repper number 26, it is a little bit smaller. I actually will use this one if I want to put even more depth in there, if I want to get very specifically right there. So sometimes I just kind of use them one after the other to just continue to build the depth just in the places where I want it. The final brush that I really like for building up depth but is a slightly different shape is another one from Repper. This is the Repper number 12. And this is the one that I used to be obsessed with before I went towards more of like the pencil brushes. But I like this one still, especially if you don't want as much of a wing shape, maybe you want more of a natural rounder look. This one is very, very dense and it's great for just kind of packing it right there where you need it. Obviously, you know, if you're packing it somewhere else, maybe in the inner corner or something, you could do that too. But typically for my eye shape, I like to put it in the outer corner and see how much depth it just built up and then you would just blend that out. So yeah, this one is super good for smoky looks as well. I kind of like the other pointier ones if I'm gonna wing things out a little bit more. So just kind of keep that in mind depending on what sort of shape you like to create, the shape of your eyes, etc. We're looking pretty good here. What do you guys think? The next section is detail, okay? So we've already got pretty good eyeshadow look going on, but we need to take it a step further. The next brush is the perfect brush for the lower lash line, and that is the refer number three. It's the perfect size. Look how small it is. If it's perfectly underneath the lower lash, Line. I'm just going back in with that shimmery brown and you can see how easy it is to apply. You can also use this for the inner corner. So I'm going to go into the little brightening inner corner shade that we have here. Dot that in. Voila! This is the perfect brush for that. If you want something even more detailed, you need the refer number 23. So this is the one that I just used, the refer number three, and then this is the refer number 23. This is another brush that you did not know you needed because it's so itty bitty, so itty bitty. Oh my gosh, it is perfect for just getting like into the corner of the eye here to kind of connect what we did. It's perfect for that. I'm just going into the dark brown Again, that is in this palette. You don't tug your eyes at all. It is the perfect little detail brush. I, I would say this is a must have. I also have a couple here that I like to use for more detailed lid work. If I'm laying down one of the Pat McGrath Astral Shades, I have a glittery inner corner, I'm using duo chrome, something like that where you really wanna lay down the color. And so the three that I have to show you here are number one, the Sonia G Flat Definer. That is this one. So I'll show you guys right here. It is so much smaller than the other Sonia G shader brushes that I showed you before. I like to use this in the inner corner if I want to lay down kind of like a brighter shadow. I also like to use it on the lower lash line. The other one that I have here is the Esum W19. This is a little weasel hair brush. Oh my goodness, this is so good for laying down shimmers in the inner corner or just a little bit of shimmer in the center there. I'll kind of show you guys with this lighter shimmer see you just get that little beam of light right in the middle of your eye so this one is really good as well the shape is just so small there's something about this weasel hair that just makes laying down these shadows so simple and effortless and then finally i have the a505 this is from that bk beauty angie hot and flashy collaboration and this one's again it's really good for shimmers in fact i think this one is called the shimmer brush there's a couple of ways that i like to use this brush we'll get to that in a second but i'm actually going to use this one to go into one of the astral shades so i think i'm going to go in to this one right here. And you definitely could wet your brush, but I'm not doing that today. I just wanna show you how well it works all on its own. I don't see any fallout, at least not yet. See how seamlessly that laid down? It is the perfect brush for laying down shimmer. This is a very, very cool multifunctional brush. So there we go. Two more here. I have the Sonia G Mini Booster. This is one that Alicia Archer from Kinky Sweat definitely sold me on. And this is just like a little tiny, I mean, I guess you could call it a crease brush, but for me, it's more of a detail brush. And I'm just going into the aubergine color that is here in our Pat McGrath palette. This is really great to just get right there at the lash line if you want a slightly smoked out effect. Not quite a wing, 
but it's it's called the mini booster for a reason it just kind of boosts up the look or if we want to just go up here and add a little bit of the aubergine we can do that it's a detail brush for me i like to use it as a little detail brush at the end of my look if i feel like i need a little bit more I just go in with the mini booster. Finally, in the detail category, we have this newer one from Refer. This is the Refer number 34. And hopefully you guys can see that because this is just the smallest little brush of all time. And I think that this is great for liners. If you wanna do a liner in anything, if you have those like Danessa Myrick's Color Fix pigments, you can just lightly dip this in there and it's so easy to get close to the lash line and do a nice little winged line or if you want to do something more graphic this is going to be great for that we're getting close to the end guys are you still with me next we have blending and cleanup these are my special brushes that i use to get my look looking super professional and clean at the end of the look and the first two that i have here are these they're very similar First, we have the refer number 14, which is, I showed you that one earlier. It's a good crease brush for smaller eyes. And then we also have the BK Beauty number 211. They're pretty much the same, except the BK Beauty is synthetic. And what I like to do is I will go into my Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder. I'll dip this in. I do this for almost every look that I do, almost every look. And I just lightly buff all over. See how that just kind of leans it up and buffs it out? It's perfect for that and the refer works exactly the same also for cleanup i like to use very small concealer brushes to usually clean up around here if i'm doing a winged look maybe something more graphic maybe something more blown out to really get that like cat eye shape and what i like to use for that is this one from sephora pro this is the sephora pro number 71 i'm going to just show you up against the number 47 it's basically just the baby version of the number 47. So I will just dip into my concealer. I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Sculpting Concealer. And usually what I do is I just go up like that. And we didn't do a super winged look today, but you can tell it makes a little bit of a difference. Sometimes I'll go up here a little bit, just cleaning up around it. The other brush that I like to use is that other one that we just used, which is the Angie Hot and Flashy 505. I won't do it now because it has that glitter on it, but this is really great for kind of sculpting this out. I like to use this also around the brows, just to kind of clean up around the brows to get them like super snatch looking. If you like that kind of a look, I like it. I like my brows to be very much like in place. So those are the brushes that I recommend for cleanup. The last eyeshadow brush category are for cream products. So I have just two to show you guys. I don't use a ton of cream eyeshadow, but I do have some brushes that I think will work very well. The first one is from the Sonia G Fusion Eye Series. This is a new brush line that she just came out with maybe like a month or two ago. And this is the Fusion Worker. This looks like pretty much her other shader brushes, except this is in that fusion bristle type. So this is gonna be really good for cream products. I think this is gonna fit a lot of different eye shapes. If you have like those Charlotte Tilbury eyes to mesmerize, for example, you can just dip this little baby in and it's gonna be great for blending all over the eye. The other one that I wanna show you is more so if you wanna go into the inner corner or the lower lash line, and that's the BK Beauty 210. So this one's gonna be good if you wanna do a little bit more detail work, if you wanna go underneath right here. I feel like with cream looks, a lot of times people are going for one and done. Maybe you're just kind of laying it on the center of the lid. So I don't have a ton of recommendations for cream eyeshadow. For me, I'm usually doing mostly kind of like a one and done kind of look. Two more categories that I want to cover real quick. The next one is for body. I know you didn't think we were going to cover that, but I do have one brush that I particularly like to use. If I'm going to go in with like a body shimmer or a body bronzer, I'm pretty pale. So if I'm going to a special event and I want to like bronze up my decollete, I will use this one from Refer. This is the P22. I think this is the one that was supposed to mimic that Tom Ford brush that never came back that everybody was crazy about this is pretty big i don't really like to use this for bronzer like look how big that is it's almost engulfing my face but i think this makes an excellent body brush if you just want to brush that along your shoulders buff in a little bit of bronzer i like to go into my tom ford soleil bronzer in the shade Terra, and i just kind of buff this all over the place i also think because this is goat hair if you had a cream product i think this would still work as well it's a very very hardy brush 
So I think if you had like a Fenty body sauce or something like that, you could probably get away with this also. The last two brushes that I wanna show you are in kind of a miscellaneous category. And the reason for that is because these are kind of do it all brushes. They're very multifunctional. So I didn't really know where to put them. And they're two of my favorite brushes in my collection. Some of you are probably wondering why I haven't talked about them yet. So here they are at the end, okay? So we've saved the best for last. The first one is a brush that is actually relatively new to me, and that is the Sonia G Buffer Pro. Oh my goodness, this brush is so, so good. I will show you guys a comparison up against the Smooth Buffer. So we have the Buffer Pro and the Smooth Buffer. They're basically the same brush, except the Buffer Pro is just bigger and I think that makes it a little bit more multifunctional in my opinion. I think that you can use this for all over powder. I've actually been using this as my go-to bronzer brush lately because at least on my face it's big enough to cover my cheek. It's big enough to kind of buff around the forehead. I really like to use this for bronzer. I think it's great for blush. You could get away with using it for highlighter. I would say the Smooth Buffer, I think that this one is good more so for like buffing in those deeper blushes, buffing in the highlighter. Better for the Guerlain Meteorites because these fit in like the little jar better. So this one is fantastic. Both of these are great. I don't know if you need both of these. I think it just depends depends on if you want more like bronzer powder options or do you want more finishing powder highlighter options. And then the last brush that we're going to talk about is this one also from Sonia G. This is the Niji Pro. This also came out this year. I will link down below. I have a full review of this if you guys want to see, you know, some demos and just explanation about this brush. I will link that down below. This is a really cool brush. And like I said, it's very multifunctional. I think a lot of people, they get this because they wanna use it for bronzer. It's really good for buffing in any kind of powder product. It's also, because it's quite dense, it's great for picking up baked formulas. Anything that's a little bit harder to pick up, it's gonna be really good for that, but it's also, incredibly soft. It is so, so soft. And because it has this flat yet poofy shape, you can also use this for blush. You can also use it for contour. In fact, I'm pretty sure in my review, I used it for powder, bronzer, blush, contour, and highlight. So I'll show you guys how you can use it for all of those different purposes. So a lot of you guys ask me about this brush. Is it worth it? I honestly think it is because you can use it for so many different things. It kind of eliminates the need to buy other types of brushes. I mean, if you like brushes like I do, it makes total sense, but I think this is a really good do-it-all kind of brush. All right, friends, so I finished up my makeup, and this is the final look using all of my favorite brushes. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that this video was enjoyable. If you liked it, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, sound off in those comments down below. Let me know what are your favorite brushes. What are some of your favorite brush brands? What are some that I need to try? Maybe some that I haven't mentioned in this video, because obviously I stick to a lot of the same brands. I would also love to hear from you all what other brush content do you want to see? Do you want a video focusing on brush sets? Since we talk more about individual brushes in this video, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to be content that you guys want to watch. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more luxury beauty content. And with that, friends, I hope that you're having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye. <music>